It is a project numerical integration. From the fundamental theorem of calculus, definite integrals can be evaluated by first finding an antiderivative. However, often it is difficult or impossible to find antiderivatives. Once it is the case, we may approximate the definite integral using a computational method called numerical integration, which is a generalization of Riemann sum. Here, uh, numerical integration can be performed as follows. First, approximate the function f by a polynomial and integrate the polynomial over the interval. Here, f is approximated by a polynomial and the integral of f will be approximated by the integral of the polynomial. And for general function f, maybe antiderivative is not easy to find. However, for polynomial, you know how to get integral. The polynomial approximation and integration can be applied for each subinterval or each several subintervals. Let's begin with uh, the following polynomial interpolation theorem x0 to xn, n plus 1 distinct uh, points are given, and that is x values, and then for arbitrary y0 to yn, uh, that is a unique polynomial pn of degree at the most n, such that pn xi is yi. That means that uh, a polynomial exists uniquely such that the polynomial passes uh, every point uh, x0, y0, x1, y1, x2, y2, up to xn, yn. For example, we have three points in the plane. Here there is a first point and the second point and now third point. Then uh, uh, there is a unique polynomial, quadratic polynomial, and passing this, all these points. The polynomial can have different form, however, uh, the second order polynomial must be unique. Existence and uniqueness is guaranteed by this uh, theorem. Among uh, many uh, forms of polynomials, will try to um, uh, use a Lagrange form of interpolating polynomials. Now, once uh, points are given, theta points, xi, yi, i is moving from 0 to n, so there are n plus 1 points, and we can uh, find degree n polynomial passing all the points, and we assume here xi are distinct, and the nth degree Lagrange interpolating polynomial is a polynomial of the form. Here, y0, ln0, y1, and over the yn, uh, here, so that um, each of that ln0, ln1, up to ln n, these are nth of the polynomial and used as uh, basis functions. And L and I are satisfying this condition. And it's Kronecker delta so that an L and I, xj is same as uh, delta ij. For example, here and there are n plus 1 points start with uh, x0 and x1 so that over there and so that this is xn. Then, for example, ln0, that is a basic function corresponding to this x0 
So x0, the value is 1, and for every other point, the value is 0. Like that. So that is a basis function, and it is called a cardinal function. And by using these basic functions, we'll try to uh, express uh, the interpolating polynomial. Okay. Now um, here, and we try to construct uh, basic functions when n is two. There are three points: x zero, y zero, x one, y one, x two, y two. And for this um, point, we try to construct. Now, L2, 0, L2, 1, L2, 2. And each one is a sec second of the polynomial. So uh, if you are trying to, OK, so that uh, consider in this way here x0 and x1 and x2. And now y0 is here y1 is here, now y2 is here. But independently of y values, we try to construct the basic function so that at x0 the value is 1 for first one, and for other point is 0. OK, so here, let's focus on L2, 0. OK, then it should satisfy L2, 0 at x0 is 1, but at x1 and x2, the value must be 0. From these two conditions, we can uh, write down L2, 0 in this form. It must be 0 at x1, it must be 0 at x2, but it is a second order polynomial. So that anyway, here x minus x1, x minus x2 must be. Uh, uh, factors of L2, 0 is quadratic polynomial, so the remainder part is only a constant. Now we have to decide the constant A. Now use uh, the, the final condition L2, 0, X0 is 1. From the condition here, here L2, 0, X0, so that X0 here, X0, then must be 1. So the A can be written in this way. Combining this one and that one, we reach uh, that one. Okay. So we found L two zero. So uh, this one will be uh, here is is x zero and x one and then x two. Then here at x one is one and x one zero and x two zero. So that quadratic polynomial it is given in this way. Right? Now, similarly, we can formulate L21 and L22. That is now L2, okay, L20. L21 is 1 here, and for other two points, it must be 0. So that, that way, so that is now L21. L22 is 1 here. So the 0 and 0 and here 1. There's L2, 2. It's exactly the same way uh, you can find these um, the basis functions. Here the pattern is, for example, for this one, L2, 1. Then you are putting here x minus x0, jumping uh, x minus x1. Now you are reaching at x minus x2 and copy this one to the bottom and x is replaced by x1. That is exactly what we did. Here for that one, x1, x2. So the x minus x1 for this 0, x minus x1, x minus x2. And now that one is copied to the bottom and x is replaced by x0, right? The same way over there. And now, for L2, 2, x minus x0, x minus x1, and x minus x2 must, be, must not be here. And copy this into the bottom, and x is replaced by x2. Right? So, the 
Lagrange interplane polynomial, P2 is given in this way. So we have that mm, formula. Okay. Now, for uh, uh, this Lagrange uh, polynomials, here uh, we start with uh, uh, the partition, the uniform partition, so that x0, x1, x2, x3, the interval length are all the same. And that is for simplicity. Even though it's not uniform, you can do that. But anyway, we start with a simple partitioning. Okay, here we have trapezoid rule. And trapezoid rule approximate the function f with a linear polynomial on each sub interval. So here uh, we'll find the p01, uh, that means the polynomial passing here x0, y0, and x1, y1. For the first sub interval, we try to find um, the linear uh, polynomial. Interpolating uh, 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 the function. Okay, here, so the form is given in this way, and p01, mm, the first sub interval, anyway, that is now here x0 and x1. So, uh, and here we have to find the l01, l10, and l11. These two um, basic functions and f0 and f1 is multiplied and then we can get linear uh, approximation but it can be uh, done in this way quite quickly l10 is now x minus x0 must be jumped and x minus x1 this one is copied uh, to the bottom and x is replaced by x0 the similar you can mm, get it now, uh, if we try to make integration of p01 over x0 to x1, then f0 and that integration, and f1 and times this integration. But we already know that this is triangle area, that integration must be the area of triangle. And that is same as bottom length and height is 1 divided by 2, so that the integration of this one is the same as that one. Again, the integration of this one is the same as that. In fact, these are the same. So we can combine them. So here, uh, if we write down here x1 minus x0 uh, by h, then that is exactly area of trapezoid as h is power length, and that is average height. And, okay, I'll explain a little bit more detail. Here, that is x0 and x1. Of course, later on, there will be x2. But f is given in this way. Then, here we have, okay, the here linear approximation. And then, this area of this trapezoid is given in this way. The bottom length times average height. There's area of the trapezoid. That's reason it is called the trapezoid rule. Okay. Now, the integration over a to b of f is now for each subinterval, if you sum through each subinterval, then Mm -hmm. That is the same as uh, the integral. And now, for each subinterval, we are approximating f uh, with uh, the linear polynomial. And we already know that the integral of that one is the same as this one. So that if you do mm, manipulating, uh, manipulate the, the terms together, then you can reach at that. Okay, h is common, you can go out. Now here, uh, there are n subintervals. Okay, now 
for that one, okay, and for the first one here, F0 and half of F0, that is F0, F1, F2, F3, and last one will be Fn. Okay, so here in the first interval, half contribution and half contribution. From second uh, sub interval, again, half contribution and half contribution. Right? So that for interior points, one contribution, F1 to Fn minus 1, is contribution is 1 because it contributed from both sides. But for edge points, only half contribution. So that becomes the formula. Okay. Then uh, it is known that the error is now order h squared. If you are choosing h halved, then error will be reduced to a quarter. Now we have a Simpson's rule. The Simpson's rule approximates the function f with a quadratic polynomial on each two subintervals. For each two subintervals. So uh, we'll uh, try to get um, a formula for just two subintervals. Okay, now here that is x0, and that is x1. Now x2. Here, xi is the same as now x0 plus 2, no, no, not 2, ih. So that ih, the uniform interval. So that is the same as, in fact, x0 plus h. That is the same as x0 plus 2h, right? Okay, for these uh, three points, we can get here basis functions and quadratic uh, basis functions and uh, the polynomial approximating over this two semitable will be p0, 1, 2. And we have to uh, use these cardinal functions already we uh, constructed earlier. And now by using x1, is now x0 plus h, x0 is, uh, x2 is x0 plus 2h, we can get uh, that one. Now, we try to integrate it and over x0, x2, then, uh, even though it takes a little bit of time, you can reach uh, that one. So here, for each two subinterval, now, okay, for each subinterval, from x0 to x2, here you have the function will be here now f0, f1, f2. Now in the center, six, four contribution, and in edge of the two subintervals and you know, one contribution. So there are six contributions. So divide by six. So it is a sort of average height. And the bottom length is here 2h. But here you have to uh, remember that the, the center is has a four sub contribution and h has only one contribution. So total 6 divided by 6. And the interval length is 2h. Okay. So here, the over uh, the whole interval a to b, and assume that n is even, then i is from 1 to n over 2. So that here, this is now integral for each two subintervals. Now we can approximate the function by quadratic polynomials, and from each subinterval, we have that mm, contributions, and summed here uh, n over two times, so that that is the formula. And it is known that the error 
is order uh, h to the 4. Uh, that means that if you have uh, the h, then l will be uh, approximately 1 over 16. Okay, here uh, we'll see an uh, example, a uh, MATLAB code. And now uh, we'll use Simpson's rule to approximate from 0 to pi sine x. The exact value is 2. And by using the subinterval, mm, 10 subintervals and 20 subintervals, we try to um, approximate the uh, integral. Here, this is complete code of Simpson's rule. Now, the input is a function and lower limit and upper limit and number of subintervals. And here, first, we are checking that once n is not even, then error message is um, uh, printed and here, the ignored this portion. The program will stop. Uh, once it is even, uh, then we are we make here h, and now we make partition, and for partition here a y value will be made. Now i is moving from, okay, MATLAB is not start from uh, uh, zero. The index is start from one. So the first point is now x one and two. So the last one will be n plus 1. So that uh, here, there is a first two subinterval. So start from 2 and each 2, we are trying to get here and left 1 in one contribution and center 1, full contribution, right 1, one contribution. And after sum these uh, uh, quantities and finally, you multiply now 2h over 6 because 2h over 6 is common everywhere so that it is multiplied at the last moment. Okay, so that is uh, a complete code for Simpson's rule. And for sine x, and beginning point is 0, and upper bound is pi, and number of uh, sub interval is 10. And we call Simpson's rule and print out. And after changing this one 20, we print out. Then you can see the result. Okay. Now we know the uh, exact value is two. So this portion is error, and this portion is error. You can check easily that this error is approximately one sixteenth of that one. Okay. Here, uh, what you will do, implement uh, the two method for numerical integration, uh, save it to Trapeze rule and Simpson's rule is already given so that you can mm, copy paste for uh, the second one. Now, uh, select the functions, three functions and three mm, the corresponding subintervals. Here, f1 is given in this way, and uh, for f1, the interval is from 0 to 1. Now, exact interval is pi. Now, f2 is 1 over x, so that integral is logarithm x. So, uh, uh, here, uh, is logarithm e is 1, so we know the exact integral. But anyway, by using numerical, integration, we try to compute the approximate the value and see if how much the error is included. Now, for third function, you choose your own way and also you choose uh, the interval and, and for which the exact interval is known. Choose one. And here, uh, for each function fi and try to compute here triples by using triples rule with n is 4 and 8 and also use a Simpson's rule with n is 4 and 8. Uh, for the result, we can say here t 
Ti4, Ti8, and so that um, i is from 1 to 3, uh, you will find these quantities. And then now try to measure the ratio of the error. Then for this top one, the value must be approximately 4. For bottom one, for Simpson's rule, the ratio must be approximately uh, 16. Okay. Now, uh, here, uh, try to compare to ITI from TI, and that is uh, a better solution times 4 minus worse solution divided by 3. Then, now, uh, uh, for each I, you uh, find this one, and then uh, try to here compare the error so that now and you can see that um, here this one is um, much better okay now uh, for uh, RSI is defined in this way for Simpson's rule the better solution times 16 minus worse solution uh, from Simpson's rule and, and divide by 15 then for this one, uh, you can check the error. So error must be uh, much smaller. You'll see that. And after doing this uh, computation, try to report your experiences, including your code and results. Here, the, that techniques are called Richardson extrapolation. And this technique has been employed for high order accurate estimations in various applications is really a wonderful technique. Okay, that's the, the scope of the project. Thank you.